Making the conversion from a carburetor to fuel injection has never been easier thanks to Sniper EFI. And with the addition of our HyperSpark Master Kits, upgrading your ignition system to HyperSpark components just got even easier. With only four wires between you and a complete Sniper EFI install with upgraded HyperSpark ignition components, this is by far the easiest EFI conversion on the market. I could keep talking about how easy it is, but I'd rather show you myself. I'll be using this run stand, which has our basic 4150 Sniper already installed on this Chevy 350. I know I've got a little bit of a head start since the throttle body and the fuel system are already installed on my engine stand, but I think you'll get an idea just how easy the HyperSpark harness and ignition swap can be. And to make it just a little bit more interesting, I'm gonna go ahead and time the whole thing. Begin by disconnecting the ground and power wires from the old harness that are run to your battery. Remove the switch power wire from its source. Now disconnect the old harness at the seven pin connector that's coming from the throttle body. We can also remove the 10 pin connector that's providing a signal to our tachometer and the coil driver. Don't forget to remove the coil driver wire that's connected to the negative side of your coil. There's no need to disconnect the coolant temp sensor, three and a half inch dash, or the O2 sensor, since they plug into separate leads coming from the throttle body and not our main harness. We will also need to cut the blue wire that's supplying power to the fuel pump from the old sniper harness. Disconnect the distributor at the connector and remove the tack wire from the dash if you have one. Then the old harness should be free. With the old harness removed, we can lay out the HyperSpark master harness. The seven pin and 10 pin connectors get plugged directly into the corresponding connectors that are coming from the throttle body. Plug the HyperSpark distributor into the connector found in the HyperSpark master harness. Follow the harness back and locate the connector for the HyperSpark ignition box and coil and plug them in. Connect the coil wire from the HyperSpark coil to the distributor. A new coil wire may be necessary depending on where you've mounted the coil. Next, locate the blue fuel pump wire in your harness. This is a dedicated circuit that's powered by a built-in relay and fuse and should be used to power your fuel pump. Run the blue wire to the positive side of the fuel pump and connect it using a quality butt connector. Holly carries a wide array of fuel pump options to cover everything from carburetors to fuel injection. Whether you need an external style inline pump or a complete in-tank style pump for your factory muscle car, or even a drop-in unit for that custom tank or race cell, Holly has you covered. The negative side of the pump should be connected to a good ground source. Now locate the pink wire in the harness. This is the switched power wire and needs to be connected to a clean switched power source that has power in both the run and cranking positions. Never use the positive coil wire for your switch power source. Some possible locations to find switch power include the ignition switch and the fuse panel. The last connectors we need to make are the battery positive and negative leads. These are the heavy gauge red and black wires that are found loose in the harness. Strip and install one of the eyelet connectors that's included with the HyperSpark Master Kit onto the red battery wire. Both of these wires need to be connected directly to the battery and should never be connected to a junction box, bulkhead terminal, starter, or a cutoff switch. Connect the red wire to the battery positive terminal and tighten. The reason you want to run these wires only to the battery is because the battery acts as a buffer, helping to absorb and dissipate any transient voltage spikes that may occur, thus protecting the ECU and ignition components from damage. Dual pulse batteries make isolating the ECU power even easier, but they're not required. Just be sure to use quality electrical connectors that are properly crimped and ensure that you have good contact with the battery terminals to avoid any power supply issues. Crimp and connect the black wire to the battery negative and tighten the connection.
With all the wiring completed and the HyperSpark components connected, we can power the sniper system up. Turn the key to the run position, and if everything has been done correctly, the handheld should now be powered up. We've went ahead and upgraded our three and a half inch handheld for this bigger Sniper five inch dash. The larger size makes it even easier to see and use. From the home screen, select the wizard icon, select the number of cylinders, engine displacement, and the target idle speed that you desire. Choose from the three cam choices that best fit your setup, then select whether or not you'll be using nitrous. For the ignition type, select HyperSpark Distributor. Choose your target ignition timing for wide open throttle. Click Next to allow the wizard to start creating a calibration based on the selections you've made. Once the calibration is complete, you'll have to power the system off for approximately three to five seconds. Then you can turn the key back on and you should hear the fuel pump kick on and prime the system. When you're ready, crank the key and wait for the magic to happen. I was able to completely wire the system in just under roughly six minutes. Now I know it's a lot easier to do this on an engine test stand than it is in your vehicle, but it still illustrates just how easy wiring a Sniper EFI and HyperSpark ignition system can be. If you'd like to learn more about our HyperSpark Master Kits, or you want more information on Sniper EFI, visit us at holly.com.